Now that go back into GIMP, file, go into file, open as layers. Now this will do what it says it does. It'll open up any image that you click on as a layer inside of your layered document. So it's a cube occlusion that we just made. Okay, now that's a layer. And just delete this ambient underscore occlusion layer without anything on it because that was just a placeholder to show you the folder structure. Okay, once we have this, we don't really want it to be white because it's hiding the texture underneath. So let's go into, not Firefox, go into GIMP and go into Colors, Colors menu in GIMP and select Colored Alpha. What Alpha is, is Alpha is how clear or, or how invisible or how not invisible something is, basically how transparent, how not transparent. So if you put something entirely to Alpha, it'll be completely transparent. Um, so as you can see, this is a black and white image. So when we, when we put white to alpha, for example, if I click on this, I can adjust this color. So I'll adjust it to entirely white. If you make it entirely white, it takes makes all the white transparent and all that's left is the black or the shading. That's what we have here. I'm going to go into file, export to cubetexture.png because that's, you know, we, we made the cube texture. So now if you click on export to cube texture, it'll automatically overwrite it and we can go into blender. Uh, select this cube, go into go into edit mode where you can see the UV here, and select cube texture from this image menu. Now if we go into image, reload image, it'll automatically load the changes we made in Blender, and hey, look, we can see there's, there's shading now. You can actually see the, the edges here, which is really nice. That's what we want. Okay, great. So now we, now we have some basic shading on our cube with an ambient occlusion. And now that we have that and we got all the proper structure, we're going to go ahead and make an eyeball. Now first I want to figure out which face I want the eye to be in. So going back into Blender here, if I press 1 to go into front view, uh, I want this face to be this to be the front of the cube where the face and the eyeball is. Uh, so if I go here and click on face select, select this, I'll see, okay, so this this square on the UV map corresponds with this face in the three in the three D model. Now, if I go back to GIMP, open up my uh, cube UV reference, I can see right there. That's where I want to paint the eye. And I'm going to go ahead and select this cube UV PN PNG layer and adjust the opacity up here. This is just going to make it more or less transparent. So I'm going to adjust this so that I can still see the lines here for reference, but I'm, they're not going to be in my way, interfering with, with me being able to see what I'm doing. Now that I've done that, I'm going to select, go into Components, and I'm going to change the name of Components to Eye. And everything in the, for everything in the Components, I'm going to add an Eye underscore beforehand and press Enter to, to make those changes final. So Eye underscore. So now instead of just normal shading, it'll be I underscore shading. And I am doing this because we will eventually have, we'll have at least one more component in this folder structure. And so it can, if you have lots of different components, it can get extremely confusing between everything being called the same name and all the components. So you want to make sure you can distinguish individual layers in, from component to component. And that's an easy way to do so. Okay, now let's go into the tools menu here. This this tools menu, this is where I've been zooming in and out from uh, using this magnifying glass tool. You can click with this to zoom in and you can press the minus button to zoom out. So clicking to zoom in, minus button to zoom out. And now we're going to select the brush tool right here. And we're going to select a brush you can change that for here in the tool options menu if you don't see this little toolbox right here uh, go into windows and then toolbox and that'll create a new one for you and you can just drag it off to the side so that you can see it okay with my brush selected now i'm going to click on this and change my brush i'm going to change to this one and i will change the color to a light yellow so i want to i don't want his eyes to be pure white just um suggestive of white and I can change the size and the opacity so that this will make the brush you know more or less transparent but I wanted it 100% for now I can also make it a large brush by dragging the size scale uh, slider or a small brush by dragging the size thing um, I will just type in a value so I'll type in 20 to make this a 20 pixel wide brush 
or maybe I don't think that's how it works actually I think it's maybe area I'm not not entirely sure but I'll make it a size 20 brush either way and I'll start drawing in a crude representation of an eye so make make this uh, make this look somewhat like what you want your final eye to look like because the closer this is to what you want the final eye to look like the easier it will be for you in the long term all right I've now painted an eye there we go. I'm going to use the eraser tool to make the corners a little more pointed. And that does exactly what you would think it does. It erases instead of creating like the brush does. Oh. If you accidentally press, you can press Control Z or Command Z in a Mac to undo. If you press it too many times, you can press Command Y and that will redo um, you know, the previous steps. So. I accidentally deleted the I by pressing undo too many times, and so I pressed command Y there to redo and bring it back. It's a lifesaver. Redo is an absolute lifesaver. So is undo. Okay, so now I'm just uh, simply clicking and dragging with my mouse. Simply clicking and dragging. If you are very into digital editing and you think you want to kind of pursue it further as a hobby, I would highly recommend for this getting something called a a tablet, a drawing tablet. There's like I know I have a Wacom, Wacom, however you pronounce that, a Wacom tablet, and it allows you to draw on the tablet, and that translates onto the computer screen, which makes things a lot easier than drawing with a mouse, in my opinion. But but yeah, we're I'm doing it with the mouse for you guys because. I don't know if everyone, you know, everyone's probably not going to have a tablet. So this is something that you can follow along with right now. You don't have to go and order a tablet or save up for one. It's just, uh, you can just do it here. And now that we've, let's see, so now that I've made a fairly nice eye shape, I'm going to go into my eye details and I'm going to make an iris and a pupil. You can make the iris whatever color you want. I'm going to go with the re a red color that I had before. And I'll click on OK. Now I'm going to go back to my brush and I'll make the size uh, 21. Why not? 22. Now I'll make it. I'll make the size 23. I will click right here. Okay. Now for this, I'm actually going to use the pencil tool. What the pencil tool does is the pencil tool always has a harsh edge. Um, actually, no, I'm not. But but I'm not going to use the pencil tool. But but what it does is, as you see here, you you can see the individual pixels because the pencil does not have uh, smooth edges like the brush does. So I'm actually going to go back to my brush and select. Uh, let's see, yeah, I'll select this sort this harsh edge circle right here. But because it's the brush, it'll have uh, slightly smooth sides. And these the smoothing of the sides is called anti-aliasing. If you want to impress your friends with big computer graphics words uh, it's not it's something you might learn about in the future but yeah anti-aliasing that's the the fuzzy border effect to reduce the pixelation look fuzziness versus sharpness it's um it's kind of a theme that you will see repeat itself but for now i'm going to change this to black and i can do that by actually click if i click on this icon right here it'll this will revert back to the default black and white palette so I'm going to do that, reduce my brush size, and make a pupil. I'll just uh, just make this a smaller size. And once I do that, just click on the middle of this eye right here. Well, and it is black. Now make sure while you're doing this that you are in the eye details, um, the eye details layer. Because if you're not if you're not in the eye details layer, you'll be over you'll be painting over the eye base, and you don't want that. So you, you can you can make this different sizes, um, whatever you want. I'm going to make mine a little bigger. You can edit it to your heart's content. And once you are happy with what it looks like, then we can you can move on to the next portion, which I'm going to be which is going to be a mouth. I'm going to be making a little tiny mouth for our eye guy. I guess that's what we can call him. We'll call him the eye guy. Sounds sounds cool. All right. I'm just making the pupil again. There you go. Okay, so I like I like the way that looks, and so I'm just going to make a new component, and I'm going to call this component mouth. Now, as you can see, component components are basically just different parts of your texture. You can actually make your components be colors. So, for example, say you're making a uh, a 
blue and orange car and you want to edit all of the blue portions of your car's texture and all of your orange portions separately, separately you can make your components be called blue and orange uh, for example something like that so it's just anything you want to keep separate from another part so we'll, we'll make a component called mouth and of course we'll give it the same structure we'll make it mouth underscore base oh, that's an email and not while I'm recording please I guess I can't really stop it can I okay and then mouth underscore uh, details yeah mouth underscore details mouth underscore shading and mouth underscore highlights okay good so we have all of the components now as as you can now you can kind of see why I put the mouth underscore and eye underscore because otherwise it would be very easy to accidentally click on say the shading for the eye and think that you're editing the shading for the mouth and then you know suddenly you've got a mess where the shading is all in different places and just it just it just becomes messy so this, this is a nice organized way of doing things it's much easier workflow wise and you're not going to spend 20 minutes trying to find everything Okay, well, anyways, now that I have yammered on enough, let's click on mouth base and make a mouth base. Same thing, really, that we did for the um, for the eye base, except this time it's going to be a dark red color. And I'm going to make him smiling. So it's just, uh, let's just give him a little smile there. <laughs> Why so serious, eye monster? Oh, no, he's the eye guy now. I forgot. Why so serious, eye guy? A. Okay. And the same thing as before, just take the eraser, just drag it along here. Yeah, there we go. Woo! Okay. I'm gonna make this as symmetrical as possible. That was too much. Oh. <laughs> That's why you don't want to do things in one broad stroke. As, as long as you hold the mouse wheel down, or, yeah, as long as you hold the mouse wheel down, that's going to be counted as one action. So if you hold the mouse wheel down throughout an entire action and press um, undo, then it's going to undo everything you did while you held your mouse wheel down. Whereas if you, so, yeah, whereas if you click and let go and then click and let go, it, that's going to be counted as two separate actions. So just make sure if you're doing one long continuous action that you let go of the mouse every now and then, otherwise it'll be a pain if you slip just a little bit. Yeah, that's that's uh, lessons learned the hard way many times over, actually. I still, I still make the mistake sometimes of holding down the mouse wheel too long and then suddenly I have to undo a huge portion of work. Let's see, but yeah, this is just take some time to make the edges nice. All right, I like that. I think it's good. Um, I do want to I do want to take that out a little bit. There we go. No, <laughs> I'm being picky again. I just I just don't want it to look uh, I don't want it to look too bad. I mean, this is a this is a tutorial thing, but. Still want it to look kind of nice, you know. There we go. Alright, so now that we have that, what we can do is we can select mouth base and click on alpha to selection. Now what this does is it selects everything that is not transparent. And as you can see, the mouth base that we drew into mouth base is not transparent, so that's being selected. The reason for this being if we now select mouth details and change this color we're going to draw some teeth so i'm going to change this to a, a sort of a, a yellowish color a darker yellowish color i'm going to select this line brush right here now if we make teeth um you'll see oh that's still in the eraser you'll see that it's not clipping outside so i'm gonna undo that if i know if i select everything and try and do that you'll see now that it, it's going you know it's everywhere and it's just a mess but if I alpha to selection and then go to mouth details and make the teeth, it's it's contained. And that's what we want. We want the teeth to be contained. So I'll just go ahead and make some really quick little teeth. I'll make some fangs and uh, 
little triangle teeth. You can you can make the mouth anything you want to. It doesn't have to be this uh, this simple, but it can be if you wish to do so. This just just introducing you to the concepts. There we go, bam. And now if I go into file export to up, oh, I actually need to hide the UV map first. So click that little eyeball to hide it, and let's export this to texture. See how eye guy is looking now. Okay, he's looking a little, it's looking a little bland. You know, he doesn't have anything on him. Suddenly, go to image, reload image. Boom! It reloads it, and his face is actually upside down. How are we gonna fix this? Uh, well, what we're gonna do is we are actually going to take this and flip it around. So I'll go into eye right here. I really should have done this earlier, but. If I go into cube UV, make that visible, and click on the magic wand tool, this selects everything of a certain color. Um, so if I click on this and then click inside of the square, you'll see it selects everything, and I can do that for all of these squares to select them each individually. So I'm going to select this cube individually, and I'm going to go onto layer, transform, flip horizontally. And that's actually going to flip it horizontally across the entire image. So, I don't believe that there is a way for me to get around that except this. If I click Command X and Command Paste, uh, that'll delete it. Or Command X deletes and copies the selection, and then Paste just pastes it. So if I do that, uh, I can then go into Layer Transform, Flip Horizontally, and it'll flip it horizontally within that selection that I had before. So it'll now flip it within the cube. So I'm going to do that, click on the anchor, and it'll, it'll snap it back down to eye base. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing for every every layer here. Uh, I really should have, ideally I would have done this earlier. I actually did do this earlier uh, in my previous recordings. However, um, you know, this one I, I guess I kind of forgot because I was so wrapped up in trying to get one that was actually going to work and be exportable. I guess it's not too much. I just need to do it with now with mouth base. So cube UV, select it with the wand, select that particular portion, uh, command X or control X in Windows, command paste or control, or command V, uh, command V is paste, layer, transform, flip horizontally, bam. And I'm just gonna, yeah, just gonna go ahead and do that for the teeth as well. Command X, command paste layer transform flip horizontally bam uh, now for mouth details you can you can go ahead and change this to say teeth if you want to um, this the structure doesn't have to be literally copy and paste from what I showed you what I showed you is just a guideline so if you if teeth teeth this just makes more sense than mouth details so that's what I put here um, so yeah that's you know you can go ahead and change stuff like that if you want to you can add more detail layers